Hi there, and welcome to the short video looking at what products we offer in a little bit more detail. You guys might have already have noticed that we don't just offer the ordinary stocks and shares out there, but we also offer a selection of different asset classes such as commodities, uh, indices, and foreign exchange there as well. So what the whole purpose of this video is, is to give you a bit more of a flavor of uh, what those products are and what some of the most popular ones are out there as well. And then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna bring you through our uh, filtering tools. Very, very cool and very, very useful out there. It can really help you identify undervalued and overvalued products on the system. So we start off first of all with what's at the very top of the list and that is commodities. And commodities are very, very popular with our customers. And it's not just the normal uh, usual suspects such as uh, gold, silver, and crude oil, which are our most popular products that our clients go ahead and trade. But there's also a whole selection of agricultural and soft commodities You've got things like cocoa bulk bean, there's corn, there's copper, natural gas, heating oil, sugar, and soya beans there as well. So you're not just constricted to the usual asset classes out there, but you've got a whole host of new and unique products out there to go ahead and trade. Each one with a slightly different story. Many of our customers trade commodities in the back of fundamental factors, such as perhaps some political reasons, perhaps there's been wars somewhere, or even if you want to get access to a safe haven product like, uh, like gold, for example. Uh, for some uh, customers out there who want to get access to, you know, how well the world economy is doing, crude oil can be very, very useful to trade because of that. Because as crude oil prices keep on going up, that's telling you that the world demand is going up. If crude oil prices go down, that gives you a bit of an idea that uh, kind of global demand is dropping off there. So it can be quite a useful measure of economic activity. So there's quite interesting elements to look at commodities. So do look at that in some more detail. So if we then move away from commodities, and very next on the list is companies. So this is stocks and shares, not just from your local market, but from all over the world as well. And uh, if we have a little look at this in more detail, there are a rather large number of, um, of equities on there. In fact, there's gonna be thousands of them on there as well. So what you can go ahead to do, is you can either go ahead and search for what it is that you're looking for utilizing the search box up here, or you can use the filtering tool, which I'm gonna cover a little bit in a second, okay? And the filtering tool, as I said, is very, very useful. So if we move away from, uh, from companies, because I think it's quite obvious what that area is, the next thing we're gonna go ahead and look at is currencies. And currencies is a big, big favorite of mine, and it is a um, foreign exchange exchange rate. So. Whenever you guys go off on holiday, you know you have to go ahead and change up your currency at the airport uh, to buy yourself some euros or dollars or whatever. Well, that's exactly what you're kind of really doing here. You're, you're trading on exchange rates going up or going down. And some of the most popular exchange rates are stuff like sterling versus the US dollar, euro dollar, and dollar yen, okay? Many of our customers love foreign exchange. I'm a big, big lover of foreign exchange here as well, but I always recommend that you've got a bit more of a um, experience in technical analysis and charting before you jump straight into this area right away. But as I said, some very good opportunities in trading the currency markets. So if we go ahead and look at the next uh, area, which is indices, and this is a very, very interesting place to, uh, to look at in the future as well. Indices are uh, products that basically cover an entire exchange. So we've got the UK 100, which is effectively the UK stock exchange. You've got the US 30, which is one of the biggest American stock exchanges. You've got the S&P 500. You've got the uh, Japan 225, the German 30, the French 40. So for example, instead of having to pick up a whole basket of stocks and shares, if you want to gain exposure to the American market, so to speak, you could just do a trade on the US 30, and that would give you all your exposure in just one product, okay? Um, probably our most popular traded instruments out there are the UK 100, the US 30, and the S&P 500. So make sure you do get a chance to look at that. Many customers trading on the back of fundamentals, but technical analysis and charting, once again, very, very important for trading indices. Okay, so, the last thing that I want to quickly cover for you guys at home was in regards to the filtering tools. And the easiest way to do this is to look at companies. Very, very useful. If I just go ahead on here, I can actually then choose to filter uh, our, uh, our, our companies there. So I'll just go ahead and click companies and then have a look at sector. Now sector quite simply allows us to look through all the different sectors that all these products trade in and then filter it down a little bit further. If I go down to consumer and retail, for example, and then go, once again, this whole list here has then been filtered down that little bit smaller. Then I can go ahead and look at region, and we can filter by America or by Europe. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select Europe. And then finally, you can go ahead and look at country. And if I scroll down to the very bottom, I can go ahead and select UK. And these are the um, 53 companies within the UK, Europe, and consumer and retail. Once again, 
quite a useful way to look at your major products. One thing that I do want to quickly show you as well is in regards to our performance and our volatility filters. Once again, I'm going to stick with, uh, with companies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this level here to be one year. You can select to uh, filter your products by performance or volatility from anything from one day, one week, one month, three months, six months to one year. So we're just going to look at things at a bit of a longer time frame. And we can actually uh, look at the performance right here. What this allows you to do is search for uh, products that have gone down in value a lot or products that have gone up in value a lot. Well, that's certainly how I would utilize this tool the most. And uh, just to give you a bit of a flavor, if I move this icon up here a little bit further up to the very top, we want to look for products. And right here, over the last year, products that have gone up more than 119% to up to a massive 207% in this particular example. As you can see, these are the products on here that have really outperformed the rest of the market. You'd be able to identify that in literally an instant. Once again, if we go to the opposite side of the scale, where we're looking at products that have perhaps not done quite so well, I'm just gonna move this little icon down here, and we're gonna look for products that have gone down, this is between 34 and 80% over the last year. And as you can see, there are a few more extra products that have gone ahead and done that. And what it's really allowing you to do is, first of all, are you trying to find an, uh, an undervalued product because you believe it's then going to go back up in value or are you looking for products that you believe are going to continue to perform weakly and vice versa for the companies that perform very, very well? Do you think that, uh, that overperformance is going to continue or do you think perhaps now a good time to sell? Okay, so once again, hopefully you're getting a bit of a flavor of what to expect. The actual uh, volatility um, filter on here gives you a bit of an idea of how volatile the product is. Something with a low volatility means it's quite constant and stable. So imagine you're in uptrend, the price would pretty much just do this the whole time. If you're trading something with a lot of volatility that was in an uptrend, you expect it to be going like this. Okay, so the higher the percentage, the more volatile it is. And the volatility is actually calculated by doing a, a moving average of the, price, of the time period that you're looking for and then checking to see how often the closing price deviates from that moving average. So once again, it's just giving you a bit of a flavor of how stable or how volatile it actually is. So once again, if I go ahead and look at the volatility uh, section on there, and I want to look at things that are exceptionally volatile, these are products here that have got a volatility between 108 and 144%. And once you, once you can see there that there's actually only three products to go ahead and choose from. So these are the most volatile products that you have available on the platform. So these are, these are ones that you'd expect there to be some quite big market movements. Typically, if you're a shorter term trader, extra volatility can be very, very good for you because you can get some quite big swings. If you're more of a longer term value investor, you probably want to be looking for products that have a little bit more of a lower volatility. So if I just bring this measure down here there a little bit, we can get a selection of uh, a lot of firms that have got volatility between zero and 44%. And as you can see, there are quite a few uh, extra companies there with that lower volatility. And these are products that will be that little bit more stable and are perhaps that little bit more suitable for the longer term investor. Anyway, that's a very brief introduction to the different products that we have on offer. And hopefully you've got a good idea about the, uh, about the filtering tools and how you can best utilize them there at home. Thank you very much for listening.